30. Look at it. Started going up. Welcome back guys, as you have seen, we didn't get the dyno finished because of wastegate, it turns out. So this wastegate that's on the car, it's by TurboWorks, I guess it's some kind of a knockoff, doesn't really matter. I was trying to get a tile there in Eshua back order with no ETA. I do not have time to wait around, so what we're going to do is see what the hell is going on with this wastegate. Uh, we were boosting up to 32 PSI and the wastegate would not open. So let's check, let's see. I hooked up a vacuum line and I'm going to blow some air into it and see what happens right here, if it works or not. It does open. I would say it opens pretty good. Now the question is, how much PSI are we putting in from here to open that? The shock compressor is about 150 PSI, I think right now. It might be more, I think it's about 150. So whatever pressure we're giving, I cannot tell. Unless I have a regulator here that I made for when I was painting uh, one the cars. The hose will go onto the end, right here. And this will plug in here. So if I press on it now, nothing happens. But if I start turning the knob and build PSI, we will see how many PSI it will take to open this up. The spring inside this thing on the previous setup was able to provide me with 14 uh, to 15 pounds of boost on spring alone only. So it should technically open at 14 PSI. Okay, the gauge started moving. We're about to 15. This is when it's supposed to open, it does not. Let's continue. 20, 25, 30. Look at it, it started going up. That is absolutely not a good thing and not acceptable. So, the best way to fix this is to take the waste gate apart. Uh, either replace the spring inside and retest it again, and obviously clean everything possibly. I do have a knockoff spare uh, here, which is pretty much the same deal. The connection for the V band is absolutely different. So, I am stuck with this particular wastegate for the time being uh, because I would have to cut that out of the exhaust pipe, uh, exhaust manifold. So let's just stick with this and use the springs that I have extra from that. So I can see automatically that I have two springs in here and they are pretty hard to push. But also the shaft is still extremely difficult to be to push in and out which is absolutely not ideal I'm gonna try to take this apart and see if I can remove it for cleaning
So I've cleaned up the shaft itself. Seems to be much better looking. Nice and shiny. Not not like it used to be. And let's just see how it fits in here. There's still a little bit of pressure against the chef itself. So I will clean the inside of this thing as well. You have to somehow hold it and apply the clamp. But, Tile, you better pay attention to this because this is a stupid ass idea. So they have those inserts here. They fall out. So unless you get a good angle or your wastegate is straight, it's easy, sort of. Or actually 90 degrees will be easier. It's such a pain in the ass to put it on. It took me forever as you guys probably seen have seen on this video. But at least that's done. Uh, the spring in the wastegate has been replaced, everything has been cleaned. Uh, I'm looking pretty much at a, about a one pound spring. So instead of two, I've replaced it with one that I had spare from a different set. It seems to fit and work great. Okay, started moving at just before 20 pounds. Drop it, get a quick blast. So it does open about 20 psi versus God knows what the hell it was before. So now it's time to put that back in. Um, I'll do some modification as far as how it was sitting so it's easier to access and make sure everything sits and matches perfectly. So Dino, I'm coming back for you. Several days later. Well, that's why I'm back at the dyno. Uh, I have blue, uh, blueprint out of sport. Yeah, I'm warming it up a little bit. I'm gonna add some fuel just to be on the safe side. We don't want any issues with fuel now. Uh, gonna get it up to temperature, double check everything that is good to go. Do better? Yeah. Looks like you got some room to play with. Alright. That's good. Makes me kinda happy. 497 wheel horsepower right now. Oof. 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 Two more pulls left. Uh, we are basically at 550 wheel right now. 
I'm, I'm gonna try to keep it safe, so let's see, let's see what happens. So I achieved the power goal that is safe and reliable because that's what I want. I want a safe, reliable power so I can beat the hell out of this car at uh, every single drift event. Uh, 555 wheel horsepower and 460 pounds of torque to the wheels is what I have achieved. Quite unfortunately, wastegate didn't let me get more. Uh, once again, it's the wastegate problem. Otherwise, we would be running way more power because the engine can take it, it's healthy, everything is good to go. They're estimating that the engine mix around 640-650 horsepower at the crank, which then translates the transmission in whichever way. So we are at 555. Uh, give or take, it's about 90 horsepower difference. And you know what? I wanted 600 horsepower, I can safely say, yeah, my car is rocking 650 crank horsepower, but whatever. 555 is fine. I have not driven it yet around the block here because uh, apparently I gotta go back to work so I will do that at the shop. <coughs> Confusion on my end, I guess. Uh, when I drove the car yesterday, it was popping, uh, shooting flames, just acting crazy. I know why. When the car was tuned, it was tuned using uh, with the anti lag on, which uh, I don't think that's how it's supposed to be, honestly speaking. So, this is how it sounds with the anti lag off because I do uh, have it uh, disabled. Just a little rev. That was 4000 RPMs, give or take. Now we're going to turn on anti lag. For some reason, obviously, it enables itself and arms at 2000 RPMs, so anything above 2000 is going to start arming the anti lag. Which, uh, well, let me show you what it does. So, here we go. And then it comes down. So uh, there has to be a sweet spot on using anti-lag. I did a test drive just a second ago to see how the spool up and the difference is. It seems to spool up much better with the anti-lag. Obviously it keeps the turbo spooling. It is obnoxious, loud and just insane. But I do like it that way. So let's do one more hit. Just watch the flames. to GLD for the first day 
of this year for oh, actually I take it back first test drive of the new engine and new setup uh, this year so this is the very first one uh, we're going to take it easy first to see how things go I want to see where my uh, turbo leg is and everything else and once everything is good to go uh, we'll see if we can give it a beat and just, just make it fly I guess the problems are not ending. Uh, the car is choking on itself, basically losing power. Uh, something's wrong. Something with this tune is not not right. Something something's not right for sure. I don't know if I would blame the wastegate for that, but something's completely not not the way it should be. Having enough fuel. I mean, at least that's what it show, feels like because it's cutting power uh, when you're in a bank, basically going hard. So I picked up some E85, BP Racing, well, we'll try to put it in and see if that 5 gallon uh, drum does anything. Mm-hmm. <laughs> 